But the big thing is Ukraine's out of money and they're, they're out of weapons. Mm. We They desperately need the new investment from the USA. And that's, you know, $60 billion is what the president's asked for. Uh, Israel is really looking forward to its investment. And the people in Palestine need that humanitarian assistance. All three of them right now are hinging on whether or not we can get agreement on border control. Basically, yeah, the Senate right. Republicans have said without significant change in the border laws, you know, it's just toughening up the border, um, they won't move forward. They've turned down all the Biden requests for more money for border guards, for judges to process asylum applications. Um, I'm hoping that Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat from Connecticut, uh, who's leading the charge on our side, will be able to come up with mm -hmm. a good compromise and we can get that done this coming week. Well, I'm otherwise, boy, now that would be a piece it, of news. It's a really dangerous thing in terms of handing Ukraine back to Putin. I get it. If you accomplish that next week, though, this would be <laughs> this would be a screamer of a headline, as we say in the business. It's been 20, 30 years in the making to actually get Republicans and Democrats together here and, and pass legislation, not just an agreement, but make it law. Congressman, there's a report from Reuters today. The Biden administration is considering supporting new restrictions on who can seek asylum, defining asylum more narrowly, as well as an expanded deportation process, uh, maybe open to designating additional safe third countries. Is that what you're hearing from the White House? Would you support those measures? Uh, yes, I would. And I, I think, you know, Joe, we're looking at 11, 12,000 people a day crossing the border. And these aren't folks swimming across the Rio Grande. They're walking across the bridge from Juarez to El Paso and turning themselves in and claiming asylum. Mm -hmm. And we have, you know, a very generous asylum system. Because we can't process them, it's two, three, four years to get a hearing. We release them into the countryside, the so-called, um, right. you know, humanitarian parole. Uh, and then we end up with ever more people without papers in the U.S. who can't work in the normal economy. You know, we, we've got to do something. Even when Democratic cities like New York and Chicago are pushing back hard, we know that there has to be a bipartisan solution. That's an important statement for a Democrat to say to your colleagues you're talking with uh, when reporters like me are not around feel the same way. Or is this going to be something that Democrats need to do some soul searching on before voting next week, if it really came to that. Yes, some soul searching. Um, and certainly not everyone on the Democratic side agrees with me. You know, we have a, mm -hmm. uh, there's a natural conflict between our, our compassion, our desire to, to help every human being and take care of people who are fleeing, you know, murder and sexual assault and, and deep poverty. At the same time, recognizing as Barack Obama said, that we're not a country if we don't have a border. And I think there are ways we can work together. One of the pushbacks from my Republican pals is they don't want to give citizenship access to the dreamers or to the people that have been here on temporary protective status, sometimes for decades. And one of the things we want to see as Democrats, in fact, senior White House officials said, you know, I'll trade all kinds of border security for the right of our dreamers to have a path to citizenship. Well, all right, so let's stop right there because I haven't heard that word from a Democrat on this program, Congressman, since this debate began about border security, the throes of debate that we're in right now. The idea is instead of asking for help with dreamers, Democrats will trade border reform for Ukraine funding. What about dreamers? My goodness, they're old enough to have kids themselves now. Oh, I, I thank you. A lot of them now. Uh, there are many in my district in Northern Virginia, and you know they're, they're they're the heart of our economy. They're all valedictorians of their high school classes. And they're doing really well in our, our Virginia colleges and universities. Um, but you're right; some of them are getting to be into their 30s uh, with families of their own, and still um, don't feel like they can be American citizens. No green cards. Hmm. Uh, it, it's really unfair. Um, but they're not going to be part of, of this the, deal, though, are they? Well, I, I wish they were. I, I'm, I'm not a senator, so <clears throat> I'm not part of those conversations. But I'm certainly hoping that people like Chris Murphy are, are asking that as, as our part of the deal.